hurry and nip off. And we've got an hour and 45 minutes. Only an hour and 45 minutes? I got a lot, I got a lot to say. Hey, Tommy. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tom, you're not out of breath like I saw you yesterday. You're not holding that against me, are you? <coughs> okay. Everybody ready? Well, good afternoon, and uh, I would be remiss if I didn't start today, Veterans Day, uh, by taking this opportunity with the platform I have to thank the men and women who proudly serve our country and who have proudly served our country and provide us the freedom uh, that we all enjoy to do uh, what we all enjoy doing. So to the men and women who have served our country and are currently serving our country, uh, thank you. Uh, it's been a tough couple of days for myself and all associated with the Razorback football program. I made a decision uh, that there needed to be a change in the leadership of our program, and I want to thank Chancellor Steinmetz, President Bobbitt, Chairman Goodson, and the System Board of Trustees for their support of that decision. I do firmly and confidently believe it was the best professional decision and the best decision for our Razorback football program at this time. What makes it really challenging for someone that sits in my chair is the personal impact that I know my decision has and will have on the men and women that work in our football program right now, their spouses and their children and their families and the impact that I know this decision has on them. I thought our football program had taken some steps backwards in the past few weeks. I had one goal for our football program, one main goal for our football program as we headed into this season. It was a simple goal. I wanted us to be competitive game in, game, game in and game out. Not to win the Southeastern Conference, but be, to be competitive game in and game out. And I think that was clear over the past couple of weeks uh, that we were no longer competitive. And a big thing about that is our student athletes. Those 120 men worked their tails off for nine months to have the reward and the opportunity to put on that uniform on 12 Saturdays during the fall. And that should be a rewarding experience for them. That should be something that they enjoy. And as I spent time with our student athletes before, during, and after games, I got the sense that they were no longer enjoying that experience on Saturdays. And our focus of our Department of Athletics day in and day out is on the success of our student athletes, all 465 of those student athletes. And we had 120 student athletes within our football program that were no longer experience, experiencing the success I thought they needed to experience. Barry Lonnie's a former student athlete. He's a Razorback through and through. Uh, when I called him yesterday morning and told him of the decision I'd made with the change in the leadership, and I asked Barry to step up, and I asked Barry on a, under very tough circumstances to take on the leadership of our football program. And without pause, he told me yes. I know I will get Barry's best during the next three weeks because he loves this football program, he loves this university, he loves this state, and he's invested in what we're trying to do. And I know he loves, truly loves the 120 men that he's now leading within our football program. As I begin this search, I have no doubt that we will have a very strong candidate pool for this head coaching position. Why do I believe that? First, we are the University of Arkansas. We have a very proud and storied tradition within our football program. That includes 42 bowl games, a national championship, 13 conference championships, multiple All-Americans and Hall of Fame inductees. We have, we have and we offer our student athletes some of the best facilities in the country. We compete in the Southeastern Conference and we have a passionate fan base that so desperately wants for this program to be successful. We've had many of our athletic programs currently that are competing on a national level and winning national championships within our athletic department. Our football program can be one of those programs. Uh, well, first of all, I want to say thanks to Hunter um, and, um, for the opportunity and the belief that he had in me to be able to be the guy to step in. Uh, as he said, they're under very difficult circumstances. There's other guys on our staff that 
obviously could have um, been capable of doing the same thing. And so I appreciate the opportunity that Hunter's given me. Um, I obviously would be remiss without giving thank, uh, thanking Chad for uh, two years ago when he came in and transitioned from our staff from Brett Bielema to think enough of me to be able to keep me and to be a part of this uh, program and school that means so much to me and my family. So I'm be very uh, always grateful for that from Coach Morris. I couldn't help but to think uh, and get a chuckle today as uh, I was thinking about the press conference today to think about 27 years ago. Um, as a football player here, I was kind of thrust into a similar situation. And uh, for those that you know weren't around during that time, I know you know Bob and Mike and Otis and Nate and I may be missing a few other guys. Uh, when Joe Kynes so famously took over as the interim coach in 1992 at his press conference, he was asked about being the interim, and he quipped, we're all interim. And uh, I think he said it best. You know, at that point in time, his attitude was, excuse me, his attitude was one that um, was incredible to watch as a player, to watch him step in uh, during that time. We had just come off a loss to the Citadel, which obviously was a black guy on our program. And we didn't even know who the coach was going to be at that point in time as players. We experienced the, all the range of emotions that our guys are going through right now, the, you know, the confusion, the disappointment, anger, happy, sad, mad, whatever they are, they're all those range of emotions are on our football team right now. Um, I experienced those same feelings. And as I was telling the players last night, uh, I, I learned and I saw firsthand what it looked like for a guy that, that was appointed as an interim coach to come in and to – uh, right the ship and to breathe life uh, into our football players. And a little bit of a different circumstance because he had, you know, basically the bulk of the year. But as I told our players last night, uh, and make no mistake about it, this is all about our players. This is all it's about. It's about giving them um, their best opportunity to succeed these last couple of weeks. It's all about them. And as I told them last night, one of the things that I gleaned from that experience was – um, whether you were a senior on that football team in 1992 or a freshman, man, there were some good things that came out of that. Uh, those seniors that were a part of that team in 92 that went on the road to play Tennessee uh, and beat them when they were 6-0, and number four in the country, 27 years later, still people talk about that game to those people that are part of being a seniors on that football team. And the freshman class that was a part of that team, as you, we all know, uh, the same team that lost their head football coach, they stuck together, they weathered the storm, and four years later, that same team was the bulk of the team that went to the SEC championship game. So I used that as an experience last night to, to, to relate to these players, to help them understand I know what they're going through. And so because of all those circumstances, the things I've gone through in my time here, uh, obviously Hunter felt I was the right guy for this moment. And I, there's no doubt in my mind that I am the right guy in this moment. Uh, and this is all about our players. And so our job and my job is to make sure that these next few weeks that we figure out a way to um, play like Razorbacks. Um, and we've lost that the last few weeks. And we're going to do our darndest and everything we can to pump some life back into these guys and, and go and play our best football game of the year when we go to Baton Rouge in a few weeks. Hey, Hunter, uh, when did you make the decision to pull the trigger on Chad? And what can you tell the fans about your pool of candidates that you, I'm sure, already have in mind? Sure. Well, I made a definitive decision, Tom. Um, after the game Saturday night, I went up and visited uh, with the chancellor at his residence and made a recommendation to him uh, that he passed on to President Bobbitt and the board. And so that's when definitively the final decision was made. And um, as will be the case uh, throughout this entire process, I'm not going to comment on anyone who could or will not be a potential candidate for this job other than to say we will have a very strong candidate pool. Um, Hunter, I guess we've, the reports were out there that the Chad's buyout was a little over $10 million, And I guess there's been other reports he might take a lump sum. Can you clarify what's going on with his buyout? Just how tough is that to have to pay, you know, buy? I know it, lots of schools are doing it, but how, how tough a deal is that to pull the trigger when you know you might have to pay all that money? You know? Sure. Well, we will follow uh, 
Coach Morris's employment agreement, which does not include a lump sum payment, so he's got four years remaining on his contract, so we will pay him per his contract 70% of, of his contract value uh, for over the course of the next four years, and there's also a duty to mitigate within that. And obviously it's a challenge for us um, to um, take that money from somewhere and apply it um, to a buyout. And so, but um, we've got a great uh, chief financial officer who has assured me that we have the means to do so and, and it was comfortable making that change because of that. And I, I understand you're not going to give us a list of names, but do you want, do you feel like it's important you get a, a guy that's a sitting head coach? Uh, was a, would a coordinator, coordinators be considered? Maybe guys, former head coaches who have been out of the business for a while. Just what, what kind of pool are you looking at? All of the above, Bob. I mean, I want to get the best person in here to lead our football program. So on that list you mentioned, um, current sitting head coaches, coordinators, former head coaches, all of those will be considered. Barry, what did the, what was the player's response? Oh, just Hunter. Okay. Well, Let's go next. All right. Go it's surprising that Bob took somebody's question. I don't know. Just after two coaches and two huge buyouts, does this kind of change what you may do for your contract for your next coach and uh, uh, just regarding the buyouts and, and situation? Well, I mean, the, the buyout situation throughout college athletics I don't think is – is great. I mean, there, there's huge buyouts in all these contracts. And, and I did say, I thought that, um, and I said it in my opening press conference, that losing football games should be a condition for terms of uh, your employment to be uh, nullified. And that, that's tough to be a pioneer in that because that hurts uh, your candidate pool moving forward. Um, it has to be an industry-wide change. It can't be one where Arkansas takes the, the lead on that, per se, or it's going to hurt our candidate pool. So I don't see any significant changes in how we do our contracts, and uh, we will pay what we need to pay to get the best person to take this position. Uh, you said you've seen the program take a couple steps back over the last few weeks. Did you, what specifically did you mean by that, and did you think that Coach Morse kind of lost control of his locker room? I don't know if he lost support of his locker room. I thought that um, the past couple of weeks that we weren't competing the way we had earlier in the season. I think you go back to the Texas A&M game and, and how hard we competed in that game and we gave ourselves a chance to win that game against a very good Texas A&M uh, team in the fourth quarter. And even back to the Auburn game, I don't think uh, Auburn and Alabama are great opponents, but I didn't think we played very well and I didn't think we competed very well in either one of those games. And we surely didn't compete very well against Mississippi State or Western Kentucky this past Saturday. Hunter, a lot of criticism maybe on just the timeline of not giving enough time to head coaches. What was it that you saw that showed you that time wasn't going to be the right fit here? The competitive nature of our football program. Again, I didn't have tremendously high expectations for us this season. Uh, one of those expectations was for us to go out each and every Saturday and compete uh, like the Razorback football program should compete. And I thought uh, we were no longer doing that. And I don't think that takes time to motivate the players within your program to compete. Hunter, have you gotten a sense that you know donors and boosters are fully committed to doing whatever it takes to get the best guy in here? Um, I would say that the, our Razorback um, nation is fully committed to getting the best person in here. I think that we all desperately want our football program to be great again. Hunter, you pointed to your discussion with players and not enjoying um, their experience here. I was wondering who else that you might have consulted with, like I assume you know people who give a lot of money, but also what about the common Razorback fan? Did you reach out to any of them or who else? had say, I guess, on how they felt about this program? Well, I, I consulted with Chancellor Steinmetz, some members of our, our board, uh, but I didn't really reach out to anybody on our fan base. I think uh, many of our fans made their thoughts known through various mediums about what they thought about our program. I think you could look at our attendance over the past couple of weeks and see what our fan base felt about our program moving forward. But this, this was my decision. <laughs> Um, and through my observation, I spent a lot of time around our football program. It's very, very important to, our, to the success of our athletic program that our football program is successful. Hunter, as an ex-athlete, you've been in this side of the game now for a while as an AD. What have you evaluated with the, maybe the roster, the talent on the team? And um, is a radical kind of style maybe needed? Uh, Barry, Barry Lunny, one of the best of being a straight-up football player. Is that kind of something you're looking at? Because you know, we see it every Saturday, what, 
you know, having trouble even competing talent-wise as well. Sure. Well, I, I will tell you that it, there, there's plenty of talent in our locker room. It may not be Alabama-level talent, but we have plenty of talent, I believe, firmly within our locker room. And so th that'll be up to whoever we choose as our next head coach, what type of system they employ as a head coach to be successful and help us win football games. So I'm not going to put myself in a box to say I'm going to bring in a triple option coach or anything like that as a radical move. Or it's going to be we're going to hire the best football coach and allow them to put in the best system to, to make sure that our program's successful. Uh, Hunter, a couple times this year you've said that you saw progress in the program, that it may be not visible with results, but you saw progress. What do you feel happened that halted that progress? What, what internally is happening with this team? I think it really was um, – yeah, I look back to the second half of the Kentucky game. And um, we, we had fought really hard against Texas A&M. We had fought and played really well in the first half versus Kentucky. Probably did not have a, the lead we – thought we should have had at a halftime of that game and I thought our season really turned when we couldn't close out that game and get that win against Kentucky and I thought at that point in time uh, our student athletes started to lose a little bit of belief on if we could actually ever get over the hump uh, with the current leadership. Hunter when you look at what's going on right now and the search that you talk about undertaking you have a recent search under your belt already in terms of the men's basketball program how important is it to you to feel like, you know what, I've already gone out, vetted a search, I've already looked for candidates and sold the school to those candidates too. How much does that help you with this football coaching? Search? Absolutely. That search was a great learning experience uh, for me uh, very early in my tenure, a little bit over a year into my tenure, about what people outside of Fayetteville think of the University of Arkansas and how positively people think of this institution and this state and what this athletic program, at that point in time, our men's basketball program, and what they believe our football program should be. And so that was a great learning experience for me to go through that and really to see okay. on a national level the perception of the University of Arkansas on our athletic program. Hunter, after turning this coach over in less than two years and looking like that is going to be you know, more prevalent in college football as we move forward. How do you assure the next head coach that they're going to get the time to build this program and really take them in the direction that you want Arkansas football to go? Sure, that's that's my job to sell them on that. And I mean, quite honestly, um, I know I've got to get this search right. Um, we cannot afford as a department of athletics to go through this two to three years from now. Uh, this gives the timing of this change gives me a little bit longer runway to really do my due diligence on this search and make sure that we get the right candidate in here and then we allow that right candidate the time they need to build a program. Obviously, it's going to take steps. First, That first step is we've just got to be competitive. We've got to put a competitive product out on that field that we all feel proud to support Saturday after Saturday. And then from that competitiveness will become wins, and those wins will start to, start to multiply year after year. But the first thing is we've just got to put a competitive product out there in the field. Well, yeah, Hunter, a couple of things. What, what was the meeting like with the players last night, and how did you think Barry handled that? Uh, Barry handled it great. Um, I, I gave some, some remarks to – uh, the young men, the, the first thing I did was apologize to most of them uh, for how they found out about the change. Um, I had set up a text message to go to them um, at about 10.50 that scheduled a meeting at 7 o'clock. I had to travel yesterday to a women's soccer game. Um, as is often the case, uh, the story leaks out and somebody gets a story, and then our student athletes have to find out at a less desirable way than I would have preferred. So the first thing I did was apologize to each and every one of them about how they found out about that. And then talked about my decision um, to to change to make that change in the leadership, and talked about my decision um, to appoint Coach Lunny. Um, and quite honestly, the kids were really excited about Coach Lunny. I think for the reason we talked about, he's a Razorback. He's walked in their footsteps. He understands what they're going through having an interim coach. He pointed to that big win over Tennessee, um, and I think you know he's got them believing that we can have some special things happen over the past couple last couple of weeks of this season. When you made the call to appoint Barry, did you know about his history of being on the '92 team and going through an interim coach situation? Kevin himself? Trainer's pretty good about filling me in on some of the history, so yes. And, and I know it's a small window, you know, two games, yeah. but are you evaluating Barry? To be the guy, like if they go to Baton Rouge and win or something crazy, or I mean, uh, <laughs> well, I, I mean, hey, you never know, man. But Barry started his first game at Tennessee yeah. and beat the Vols, you know. So, yeah. um, I mean, it, I guess. And have you gotten some? Have you assured Barry, hey, we want you to stay part of the program, whoever the new coach is, or kind of where 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 does that stand? Um, 
I, I'm excited to have Barry Lunny as their interim head coach. Um, he was excited about the opportunity, uh, again, under some tough circumstances. He did a great job, I think, energizing our young men last night under a very difficult set of circumstances. I think they're excited about moving forward over the next two to three weeks. And I'm not going to say I'm evaluating Barry, uh, but I will tell you Barry's got a great opportunity over the next two to three weeks, and he's already hit the ground running and has been very impressive in his first 24 hours. I think there's a misconception from the public about what search firms do, and I just wanted to ask, are you going to be using a search firm, and if so, what, what type of role will they be in? Sure. Um, I, I believe it's my role as an athletic director to identify candidates that I think are the best fit for the University of Arkansas. Um, we will probably use a search firm or some type of a consultant to help me with the management of the search, uh, meaning reaching out um, to, to gauge interest, to see, uh, to do background checks, things of that nature. But it's, it's my job as a director of athletics to run this search, to identify the appropriate candidates that are the right fit, and to, in the end, identify the best candidate for this position. How important do you think it is to continue the offensive scheme that they have going here, and is that going to be a big factor when you consider candidates? Well, um, you may want to ask Coach Lenny about what his scheme is going to be for the next two weeks. I don't want to put any pressure on him. But again, that's going to go back to whoever we select. And to, to me, your scheme should meet your personnel. So if we hire a coach that has a scheme that is scheme A, that's his preference, he better make sure that he can come in here and take the student athletes that we have and, and create a scheme that works for the talent we have on this team right now, and then as he begins to recruit the players that fit his scheme a little bit better, then implore that scheme. We've got a couple things. What was Chad's reaction when you told him? Do you feel like he felt it was coming? And secondly, given the uh, early signing date, the time frame that you're working under, can you talk about that? Sure. Um, you know, Chad and I meet every Sunday, and we had met um, after the Mississippi State game, and, and he understood from that meeting, his very candid meeting after that, that the Western Kentucky game was a really key game uh, for him and his tenure here. So I, I don't think that Sunday, our meeting yesterday, took him totally by surprise. Um, I don't think it should ever take anybody totally by surprise when you, when you let them go. Um, it was a tough meeting. Uh, Chad Morris is a great friend. Uh, we left that meeting with a hug and some tears, and he will remain a great friend. And he understands, and I understand that was a professional decision. Take one final one. The, 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 the time frame, obviously, um, the early signing period is key because uh, we've got some recruits that have committed to the University of Arkansas that we want to retain. Um, and we want to give our new coaching staff an opportunity to recruit additionally prior to that signing day. And so um, giving them a, a, a runway to do that is important. But I think we've given ourselves a runway that we're not going to be in a rush. We've still got three weeks left in the regular season, another week um, for conference championship games. So we, we've got a little bit of time to get this search done the right way and get the right person in here and still allow them time to recruit. Hunter, did you have a list of specific names that you want to go after before firing Morris, or are you really going into it cold? Um, I have developed a list of candidates, absolutely. Um, but what I haven't done, because I didn't think that's the right thing to do when I still had the head coach, I didn't put any feelers out to say who's interested. I think that's not fair to Coach Morris for me to, um, to go out behind his back and see who may be interested in the position, why I still have a sitting head coach. But I will start that today and work into the list of candidates that have done up to see who truly is interested. Who are some of the mentors that maybe you reach out to yesterday, today? Maybe you talk to about this, this situation, get advice. Well, I'm, I'm pretty blessed in that uh, respect because I have a, a guy that has, shares a name, or I share his name, that um, has been a pretty fair head, head high school coach in his career. And, you know, I say that, obviously, you guys know I'm talking about my dad and uh, who – has you know had a tremendous high school career here um, in the state of Arkansas. Has been following this program for years. Whose father played here for the Razorbacks in 1946 through 49. John Lunny, who started me bringing me to games when I was eight and nine and ten years old. And so I think I started there. You know, uh, surrounding myself with a guy that's got a lot of wisdom and seen a lot of things through, and even following Arkansas football. He he's he's witnessed that over the years, not just as a fan, but as a parent. Uh, a parent of a player is a parent of a coach. And so it started there with him. Um, and uh, really, it's, it's been such a whirlwind. That's kind of where it's ended, to be honest with you. I mean, the last 24 hours has been a blur. 
uh, and you know, people say that all the time, but it's really been true. I, 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 we went to eat lunch yesterday as a family. I'm not even sure where we ate. I was on the phone the whole time. I don't know what I ate. Uh, I don't know what, where we ate, uh, but I do believe we ate lunch. And, um, but I've been using my dad as a resource, not, not constantly, not on the phone 24 hours, but I'm going to use him. Uh, we've got Turner Gill that is sitting in our office that, we, you know, that Chad hired in the off season and Hunter brought in the off season who, I mean, is a tremendous resource and going to be for me. Uh, Bobby Allen, who's seen this program, the good and the bad and the ugly over the last several years. Ron Cooper is a former head coach that I've already gleaned some things from him. Um, and so I think it's going to be a it's going to be a mixture of everybody. Um, and then obviously using my best judgment, I'm going to have to make some decisions, uh, not hardcore decisions, but I'm going to have to make some day to day decisions on my own. And uh, I, I'm ready, prepared to do that. And that's why I'm sitting here at this at this table. Barry, just, I mean, aside from motivating players, how do you motivate basically a lame duck staff and just what do you do in, as far as recruiting this open week? Sure, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, you, you know, I think uh, Hunter met with us this morning and said it very uh, clearly and very well. Uh, and I, I think he said things that we all know is, you know, everybody at our table, almost a man, has been through this in some way, shape, or form. And uh, the thing you can't lose sight of and that we're going to refuse to lose sight of is that, um, you know, we don't really owe anything to uh, anybody other than our players and ourselves uh, to uh, make the best of the next three weeks for these young men. And we got, like Hunter said, we've got 120 players down there that has, um, you know, has not uh, reaped the benefit of um, the hard work, the labor, the off season. Football is – no offense, I see Coach Neighbors back here and who was one of my first youth coaches that I ever had, by the way. Um, the best, I should say the best, the best youth coach I've ever had. Um, and that's what makes football so unique. You know, you work all, all the way uh, year round, year round. And anymore, it is truly year round. Summer, fall, spring, and you get 12 chances. You get 12 chances to uh, reap benefits of a victory. And when you don't, when you don't, Man, it, it can become tiring and uh, laborsome, and it uh, becomes a burden when you put all that work in without the effort. And so we've got two weeks left of, of a guaranteed 12-game season. we got two, two games left for them to go to try to reap benefits and, uh, of, the, of the, the work and the effort that they put in the offseason. And so we owe that to them as a staff, these, these kids, and we owe that to ourselves to put our best foot forward uh, for these last two football games, and I'm very confident that we're going to do that. Coach, with the bye week, how much can you do with that much time to get ready for LSU? How much can you change? And do you feel like you can tailor the game a little bit more towards your personnel with all that time? Well, I, I, those are good questions as well, Nikki. Uh, I mean, uh, I think you're limited. I, I know you are. You're limited in what exactly you can do uh, with the short turnaround. I mean, we do have an extra couple days of prep that, that we will use for our advantage, that we have to. LSU plays a game this week. So that, that in itself gives us an advantage of a few days of studying them and learning some more intricate details of, about things that we're going to see from a game plan standpoint. Uh, can you install or would you want to install drastic changes? No. We've been working hard the last two years on our schemes on both sides of the ball and special teams. I think we'd be remiss at this point to come in and try to do a wholesale change. And I don't think that's necessary. Uh, really, at the end of the day, um, it, what it comes down to is if we got to play with more heart. Uh, it doesn't matter what scheme we had. We could install the triple option in the bye week, and if our guys don't believe in each other and believe that they're going to win and play with great resolve and, and, and uh, effort and toughness and grit, it doesn't matter what we do in that regard. And, and that's really what we've seen for the last few weeks since, like Hunter said, the halftime of the Kentucky game. Uh, we, we just haven't been the same. Uh, I think our players lost heart a little bit after we had a game in our grasp and we let it go, uh, and I think it hurt and stung them. And uh, – we just haven't recovered from that in a lot of ways. And so my main concern and my main priority is not scheme-based. Uh, sure, is there going to be some things that I would like to see, uh, some small things? Yes, there, there are. Um, will those be uh, obvious to the outside eye? Probably not. Um, but my main concern is to get these guys to uh, give their best foot forward and play our best football game of the year. Again, I want to say this, and our kids understand this. I said this last night. Our goal is to play our best football game of the year against Baton Rouge. And whatever that looks like, I don't really care. But I want it to be our best football game. Uh, Barry, you know as well as anyone the potential for what this program can do. Uh, what 
needs to take place, do you think, to get back to, to that level? And I got one more after that. Can he do that, Kevin? <laughs> he, he can't. Okay. He's trying to sneak in. <laughs> well, that's, tr that's right. Uh, well, I mean, you got to have a guy, you know, that obviously that, that – that Hunter's going to be, uh, there's no doubt my mind's going to do a great job of finding somebody that understands this place, whether you're from here or not. It's important, I think, to understand uh, the state and the culture. Um, anybody that's come from the outside that's been successful has usually embraced that. Um, and I'm not saying Chad didn't because I've seen him do that and make great attempts to do that. So I think it starts there. I think you got to understand the history and the heritage of the program. Um, I think that, um, I think, one of the things that's, that's key is, is recruiting footprint, and I think Chad had a, a good plan for that, and I think that some, somebody could piggyback on that and use that as a springboard to continue that, that emphasis. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a tough league. We all know that. It's the best league in football, uh, the best division in football. But we all have seen there's been ebbs and flows in this over the years that has we've seen uh, the Razorbacks spike and be contenders, not just for, you know, for the SEC championship. Uh, we've played in the game three times. Um, and have uh, and so it's been done before, and I'm a firm believer what can be done, what's done before can be done again. You know, one of my favorite movies is the the old movie The Edge uh, about them being trapped in the woods with the grizzly bear. Anybody remember that one? Alec Baldwin and I think Anthony Hopkins, right? And he had to talk to believe in Anthony Hopkins in that he that he can kill the bear. He said, I can't kill the bear. He said, Yeah, what one man can do, another can do, uh, and he's right. What you know, what one team in the history here can do, another can do. I'm not saying that it's easy, but it can be done. And you just got to, you know, th th there's got to be a perfect storm of events. You got to have um, a good senior class. That's going to be critical for us to keep these players together so they continue to grow and mature together in this process. Like I mentioned before in my opening statement, um, my freshman year, you know, uh, things did not go very well early on for us, our freshmen. Our head coach had got let go after one game. And, but yet we, we, we uh, stuck together and uh, laid the foundation to be a senior class that uh, took Arkansas to their first ever SEC championship game. And so I think sticking together is going to be important for our football team, finding the right guy, obviously, that understands the history and the heritage of this program and to hit the ground running with it. What's the game day setup going to look like from a coaching standpoint? Have you gotten that far? And it, can C.J. O'Grady, is there a, a route back to the team for C.J.? No, there's not. And um, uh, as far as game day, we're going to take Daniel Prado, who served as our special teams uh, analyst and worked hand-in-hand -hand with me in the special teams units. Uh, I'm going to put Daniel on the field so he can run the meetings and coach on the field. I think that was the easiest, uh, a very clear, easy decision to make uh, for, for our football team. And so other than that, you won't see a lot of game day changes. Uh, Joe Craddock will continue to call the plays, and obviously Chief will run our defense. And like I said before, it's going to be less about scheme, and it's going to be more about trying to get our players to play with great resolve and character. Coach Lenny, obviously not a lot of time uh, left for, for much this season. And, and the future, though, the recruits that have committed to the university, there's been a few that have dropped off already. What can a staff do in a situation like this You've been through it before to try and retain these guys the best you can. Well, I'm sorry, Tom, I didn't get to your second part of your question. So here we go right here. This was it, right? And uh, well, I think the, the first thing, you know, when you recruit a kid and you get a kid committed, usually it's twofold. I mean, very seldom is a, is a kid committed solely for the purpose of a coach. It's usually a split between a coach and uh, the university, the draw, the program, uh, the facilities, the uh, educational opportunity the culture and the environment in Northwest Arkansas, there's, it's split. So uh, as a recruiter, uh, we sell that, right? You go to a kid's home, you sell. You don't sell just yourself. You don't sell just your coaching staff. You sell the university. You sell the Razorbacks. You sell the state and the pride that this state takes in our football program. And so I think you just got to continue to sell that part. Say, hey, you remember when we talked about this originally, this wasn't just about one person, one coach. This was about our program. You remind them of that. You remind them of – uh, the, the great qualities of our university, and then you remind them that we have leadership in place that is without question going to make a decision that he thinks is best for 120 football players to bring a head coach in here that uh, is, is going to want to connect with them and give them the opportunity to reevaluate their situation in a positive manner. So 
Uh, and we're doing that. We're actively spent a lot of the time on the phone yesterday with several of our commitments, uh, encouraging them and reinforcing to them that they're wanted here and they're, uh, they're going to be honored here. And that doesn't mean that the kids aren't going to look somewhere else and during this time, but the, the, our message to them is just sit tight. Sit tight. We just got a few weeks left. Let the dust settle. Uh, just, just sit tight and let's see how this thing plays out. You talk about knowing this program, knowing the history of this program. We've talked about a candidate pool. Could Barry Lunny Jr. be a candidate? Would you want to be the head coach at Arkansas? Well, uh, yes, Alyssa. Obviously, that's you know that's a dream of mine. But my focus right now is to um, to get these guys their best opportunity to play their best football game they played this year, because mm -hmm. we we've got some black eyes, and 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 it needs to stop. And that's my sole focus, is getting uh, our coaches and our players to play their best football game that they played all year long when we go to Baton Rouge. Whatever that looks like, I just want it to be our best game. OD, special teams together, and then if we'll do that, and then we'll do it again the next week when we go to Little Rock, we're going to have a chance to win a football game. I believe that very strongly, and that's my sole focus. You got just a couple more, Bob, and then that. Yeah, I actually had a couple, but kind of <laughs> – uh, piggybacking off that, I know this isn't the way you want to get your dream job, but the fact of the matter is right now you're the head coach of the Razorbacks. Kind of how does that feel? What what, what are the emotions? Well, like? it's it's yeah, I would be lying to you if I told you it wasn't mixed. I mean, it's it's very strange in, in some ways, um, but yet it feels very natural in some ways. Uh, it, and uh, the fact that, you know, as far as the situation and the circumstances that we're facing, uh, I you know, I felt like, and obviously Hunter agreed that I was the right fit for this time. Um, and so, um, you know, just flooded with memories and, you know, things of the past. I mean, I, like I told you to start my opening statement, I couldn't help but to think about Joe Kynes, you know, and what he went through. And, uh, you know, he had some great lines, you know, and he was always full of energy and excitement. And I just, I just, you know, remember how he invigorated our uh, football team that year. It wasn't perfect. I mean, we had some, <laughs> you know, we had some things go bad during that season, but, he gave us some hope, you know, and he gave us some confidence. And um, you mean kind of Joe as a role model? Yeah, I want to do that for our players. And then the other coach, you said Daniel, will he kind of start coordinating special teams? So, because you got head coach and stuff to worry about. And then will you still coach the tight ends? What, what, yeah, I'm going to still what? be involved with the tight ends just because of the restrictions that we have on staffing. Um, I'm going to definitely do to that on a day-to-day -day basis. Daniel will, uh, Daniel now will continue to collaborate on the special team stuff, but I'm obviously going to need him to step up and handle more of that on his own uh, because, uh, you know, I've been running those, uh, you know, for, for the season. I've been running the four core units, the meetings daily, and just some things he could take off my, my plate will be very helpful. He's very good and very confident in his ability to step up and to help us in that regard. You decided on a starting quarterback yet? <laughs> Well, I actually was I, – I forgot to do my opening statement and, and address the question that everybody has been, uh, you know, obviously wanting to know about leading into this game. And uh, I, I still haven't made my mind up on who's going to be the punter at, at Bad Rouge. <laughs> so we're still working that out. We got a lot of time to figure that out between now and then. And, and I don't think we're going to declare anybody to give LSU – we've played so many of them, they're going to have to – rotate we're gonna to have to rotate who they're getting prepared for and we'll just i think we could use that to our advantage and then you know we'll we'll go more pile them when we get down there surprise surprise <laughs> surprise you know